That's Rat. And round and round. And this is 80s Alive on WRCOFM 100.9. A great big thank you for making this a part of your Sunday night. Adam Hess in the big air chair taking you on through 712 is the time. And we're at 72 degrees. Lots of uh, lots of great stuff going on tonight. We have some fantastic concert tickets to give away. We'll have details on that a little later on. Some great food prizes from Sandy's and Gable's Restaurant. And, of course, tonight we are celebrating our first anniversary on the radio. 80s Alive, one year old. And uh, to sort of uh, help us reminisce and uh, welcome in our second year of existence, we have a special in-guest, or in-studio guest, and we say good evening to Mr. Chris Ryan. Ah, evening, everybody. Evening, Adam. There is a gentleman from the 1980s, and basically that's a polite say, a way of saying, Chris, that we're old. <laughs> hey, Chris, we're old. Uh, no, we, we stopped counting our age a while ago. Yeah, when, when we hit that, uh, that tragical number of 3-0, mm. you stop counting and you just reminisce about the 1980s. Yeah, I don't know if that's a plateau or what you'd call that. I would call that more of uh, um, maybe a valley. <laughs> <laughs> no, no plateaus about it. But anyway, we're going to be reminiscing about the 1980s. We're going to talk about movies. We're going to talk about events, and of course, music. Is there anything? Is there is there anything in life that helps express a decade or express a time in your life than music? If there is, I can't I can't think of it. No, nope, gotta have it. I I am with Chris on that one. So Chris Ryan, you're going to be bringing us some tasty treats a little later on. Am I correct? Oh, that is so correct. Oh, he's going to pick some great music for you. Speaking of great music, this is a very special dedication we have going out to Cody and Carson. <laughs> This is 80s Alive on WRCOFM. Hey, it's 80s Alive. That may be our new announcer chick right there. Now, give me, give me my headphones back. Uh, we're celebrating everything about the 1980s. Adam Hess with you. We have a, a great first anniversary party. We have the announcer chick over here. Hey, put those CDs down. She's trying to get out of here with CDs. How dare you? Only certain CDs. Only certain CDs. We have Chris Ryan over in Studio B, and we are talking about everything with the 1980s. Chris, we're going to bring up some events from the 1980s, and I always uh, ask guest DJs when they're in... The events that formed the 1980s, where they were when these events happened. And you're going to remember this. The Challenger disaster, Chris, where were you? Uh, in class, in school. Really? I was home I was home sick. Well, you know, I'm putting quotations. You can't see that, but I was sick. Sick. Yeah. Uh, I was skipping school like I did once in a while. Not, you know... <laughs> You know what, I'm, I'm going to get persecuted for that one. I was home. It was a, a mental health day. I took a mental health day and uh, decided not to be in school. And I remember uh, um, sort of at the time wishing I would have been in school because of the uh, um, the support I would have gotten from teachers and, and, and other classmates and friends. Announcer chick, or actually you're the stand-in announcer chick. We actually have a full-time announcer chick here already. Uh, where were you when the Challenger disaster happened? I was in school. I, unlike the regular announcer, did not have mental health days or stay home. I was in school actually studying, usually working, usually. See, you know, the 1980s to me was simply, you know, staying home and, and, and listening to as much music as possible, and school just didn't uh, really fit that bill very well. Yeah, that's pretty much what I did too. There's, and look where it got us. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's probably not a. That's not a good analogy, is it? Let's, let's hope that the uh, the principals of the local high schools aren't listening to. Well, you too right my now. principal, my principal has has uh, since retired and moved to. Uh, uh, actually, up by La Crosse, Holman, I believe. So uh, that's where Mr. Majeski is, and uh, we, we definitely miss him. And, you know, I, I miss detention, so <laughs> not really. 743, 68 degrees at WRCOFM. Phil Nee, he was uh, here a little earlier, and he requested a song, and we decided to let Chris introduce this song for Phil Nee. Take it away, Mr. Ryan. Uh, Switching to Glide by the Kings. Um, There was one I kept hearing and hearing, and I had no idea who did it. And then I did the town-to-town, up-and-down-the-dial thing during my radio career. And then eventually I wound up at the right station that actually played the song, and I I saw it on my music log and went, ah, the Kings. And he went, yes. He went, yes. Am I right? That's that's correct. It's an awesome song. It is the Kings switching to Glide on 80s Alive, our first anniversary show. Keep listening for your chance to win some great tickets. We're going to send you to Poison, Skid Row, and Vince Neal from 80s Alive. events, uh, newsmakers, but it always seems to come right back to the music. That seems to me, anyway, to be the biggest drawback to the 1980s. Yeah, definitely the centerpiece of the whole decade. You were absolutely right. Hey, you have a tasty treat for us. We, we promised people, you know, we're going to we're gonna keep calling on you for your tasty treats. They're, uh, they're pretty delicious, and uh, 
if you can't tell, I'm a little hungry. <laughs> Yeah, we should we shouldn't talk about food, should we? No, but you know what? We could probably uh, scarf one of these Sandy coupons and maybe head up there and uh, oh shoot, I said that out loud, didn't I? Mm-mm-mm. I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, delicious food at Sandy's, and of course we have uh, Gable's Restaurant trivia later on. And right now, with a very special request, we uh, head back to Studio B with Chris Ryan. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to hear here, Chris. Uh, Living Color. It was a band that hit in the late '80s, you know. And I just had a friend that actually said that I was telling Adam off air. In the late 80s. It sounds so <laughs> weird to say. But anyway, Living Color came out in the late 80s and um, had a couple hits off this album. And uh, Glamour Boys is the one we've picked. Now, a lot of people, when you hear uh, uh, Living Color, you think of another song. Cult of Personality. Cult of Personality. That was uh, probably the biggest airplay uh, as far as... Uh, um that Living Color received, but this one got some airplay as well. Uh, a good choice, and we're going to hear it right now. This is 80s Alive. Hey, what do you mean my credit's no good? Hey, that's what they say to me. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's what, that's what uh, all the companies say to me. That's no good. Chris Ryan, great choice right there. That was fantastic, I'll tell you what. And I was doing some serious air guitar. Well, I, I seen that. I was going to ask you, um, about six, maybe seven months ago, I was moonwalking. I was playing some Michael Jackson and moonwalking. I pulled a hammy. Ooh. Yeah, and I was going to ask you, how's your workers' comp for air guitar? Yeah, really. Uh, where did I develop my technique? A lot of hours in the eighties. A lot of hours in the eighties, and I noticed though, you know, even though we're, uh, you know, we're getting up there in years, the uh, the, the rotator cuff for you there. Was holding up pretty decently, wasn't it? Yeah, I've been out shooting some baskets. So, oh, you know, kind of, you know. he's getting in shape. Yeah. Now here is a group I'm going to call on. Uh, they're from England. When they when they resided in England, they called themselves Yazoo, and then when they moved to America to perform, they had to call themselves Yaz because there was a uh, a jazz record label called Yazoo, and they sued for copyright infringement. Now I'm going to let you hear this. This is from a CD called uh, Upstairs at Eric's. And you're going to be uh, hard-pressed to believe me when I tell you this. This is music from 1982, way, way, way beyond their time. This goes out for Thad tonight on 80s Alive. That's music for TC tonight. Don't go. Yeah, Zoo on 80s Alive on WRCOFM. The request line is open at 647 647- 4155. Lots of fantastic requests to get to. Now, Mr. Chris Ryan, he's just to my left. Was I not correct in uh, telling you how far ahead of their time Yazoo was? Yeah, that sounded like it should have been out later in the decade. Yeah, maybe even into the early 90s. I talk about that with uh, about everybody that I uh, that I get into here and, and will talk music with me. And not necessarily do you even have to talk music with me, just listen, you know, because I'll talk anyway. And uh, But they all agree that that is definitely, definitely a great song and, and tough to believe it's from 1982. Now, uh, speaking of the 1980s, we're going to step away for a moment, and when we come back, we're going to hear a great song from Cheap Trick from a soundtrack, and then we're going to send you on a mission, Mr. Ryan. Ooh. Yeah, another tasty morsel. What do you think? It sounds fantastic. You up to the challenge? Uh, you bet. Awesome. This is 80s Alive from RCOFM. The Press Box Bar and Grill announces it's time to... You're going to love Sandy's. Ladies Alive with Adam Hess on WRCO on Sunday nights. It rocks. When you're planning your wedding, anniversary, class reunion, or... Long hair, tall hair, too much makeup, and that was just the guys in the band. It's 80s Alive. Ladies and gentlemen, the radio edit right there, cheap trick, as we play with the boys. That from the soundtrack of Top Gun. It's 819, 64 degrees at WRCOFM 100.9. And you know what, uh, Chris Ryan, I've never been a big fan of radio edits myself. No, but when they happen like that, yeah, I mean, what yeah. can you do, really? Yeah what, yeah, what can you do when they just sneak up on you like that? I'm, I'm an album fan myself, the big, uh, the big full, uh, full-blooded, full-bred album t- cuts. But uh, like you said, what can you do? Yeah. And you know, you roll with it. Dance remixes are cool, too, and the extended 80s ones that I'm yeah. sure you've got a, you know, a ton of. Yeah. You know, I, I just go with what Steve Winwood told me. Just roll with it. Right. You have to do what you have to do. Uh, we have a tasty morsel coming up right around the corner, and we'll get a little background from you on that. Right now, we're going to play some trivia. We have a delicious Friday fish dinner from Gable's Restaurant in downtown Richland Center. If you haven't been there for a while, stop on up. And we are going to talk about Michael Jackson. Uh, you know, big, big video production with Thriller. 
Uh, one of the biggest albums ever to sell. But you know what we're going to ask about tonight? Do you remember an event of the 1980s, Chris, that uh, probably... Well, I, I'm sure it left a big impact on Michael Jackson. Do you know what we're talking about? Yeah, and I'm sure you, you're looking over here seeing me grin. I see you grinning. Yeah. Michael Jackson's hair caught on fire. No, that's not funny, and I'm not laughing. It, it was it was a tragedy for Michael Jackson. It was a tragedy for Pepsi because MJ sued Pepsi and got a big settlement out of there. We want to know what year that had happened, and we're going to give you four choices. Was it A, 1981, B, 1983, C, 1984, or D, 1987? Tell me the year that Michael Jackson's hair caught on fire during the making of a Pepsi commercial, and we are going to give you a Gable's Restaurant Friday Fish Dinner from 80s Alive. Here's a good little morsel, hey, Chris? You bet. Can't beat it. Uh, It's a little obsession on 80s Alive. That's music from 1985, Animotion on 80s Alive on WRCO-FM. We have a song from Michael Jackson right around the corner, and we decided to uh, play a little MJ trivia this time around for your chance to win a great prize from Gable's Restaurant. It is a Friday fish dinner for free, and Dustin Prohaska knew the year that Michael Jackson's hair caught on fire was C, 1984, when he was making a, a Pepsi commercial sparked from a special effects mishap, ignited Jackson's hair, and uh, I remember... Uh, the news, CBS News, Dan Rather was hosting it uh, by this time, uh, showing the pictures of him being carted off into an ambulance, and, and he was waving, and, and we knew he was okay, but still a very scary moment for Michael Jackson. 1984, that makes Dustin Prohaska a winner. And while we're at it, we'd like to say hi to Kelly Prohaska, and thanks for listening in. It's in downtown.